shall I make a wooden sign like this Wally Bra sign here? From start to finish, you know, fruition. So, we've got to start off with some sort of templates like these. And, well, unless you're really, really artistic, <clears throat> maybe not me, but anyway, if you are, you might be able to do it freehand. But first of all, I'm going to show you how I produce these line drawings. Like that, on the computer. Oh, are you excited? Well, in this video, I want to show you from start to, you know, to finish. From here to there. Because I need another Wally Bois sign, like this one. But it's going to be a little bit smaller. So let's go to the office first. So it's going to be warts and all, so bear with me. I'll take you from the house. Oh, dick. Hope she's hoovered up. <laughs> and we're going to go to the office, and then we're going to create the actual, well, templates. For which we're going to do on my computer. And it's very easy. Um, and you haven't got to worry about having particular kinds of fonts or anything like that. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Welcome to my lab. No. Oh, we're back again. Inside the house. Well, we changed routers. Was it routers? The routers. Yes. So we're going to start here in my orifice. I mean, my office. And we're going to create these templates. I'll go show you how I've done it. So what I've done is I've created two... Well, I've got two pieces of paper. Because my um, letters only need to be about four inches or 100 mil high. So I've got this one for the the Wally. As you can see, it doesn't matter that it got in line or anything. Because each letter is actually slightly different size. Because that's how I want it. And then we've got the bois, which is wood in French. So how do we create these line, you know, outlined letters? So I'm going to show you. I use a piece of software, a bit like Photoshop. You can do it on Photoshop if you want, it's very, very simple. So I'm just going to reverse this camera around, so bear with me. Oh god, state my office is a mess. <laughs> right. So this is the software I use. Let's bring you down here a little bit. There you go. And this is called Affinity Photo. Right, we'll try and do this a little bit better than that. There we go. This is Affinity Photo. It's a bit like um, Photoshop. I'm just going to keep focusing. Let's bring you a bit closer. Bear with me. Bear with me. So you probably do things live. Otherwise, you could, you know, I could be using like a piece of software called OBS, and then I could uh, do it through the computer. But like this, I can't. So what we got is Affinity Photo. As you see, I've got two pieces of paper or two pages open. This one here, which is the bois, and then I've got this one here, which is the bois. now. As you see, these letters are hollow. They're they're white on the inside and just got a line around the outside edge, which is ideal. Because obviously, hello, Ginger's a diddling. Um, so what I don't want to do is print out a big black solid letter. Because obviously you've got to use a lot of ink, and also it's harder to follow um, on um, when you're transferring the letters over from here onto your piece of wood which is waiting to be done in the workshop. So we will be going in the workshop in a moment and transferring these letters over and I'm gonna start routing them out. Very similar to the sign you saw right at the beginning. A little bit smaller, not a lot smaller, but a little bit smaller, not a lot. So as you can see, these letters currently are white with a black line around the outside edge. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the file. No. I'm gonna pick a A4. I've got my A4 there, but it needs to be in landscape format. So I come over here, and this is Affinity Photo. It's very similar to Photoshop. I actually prefer it. And it's a once only payment for about 50 odd, I think it's $50 or Euro, 50 euros. And um, it's one so you don't have to keep paying it every month or, or you know, that you do with Photoshop now, um, which can get very expensive. So it's a one so you know, once you bought it, you bought it. And it is a really good bit of software. I really recommend it. I used to use Photoshop, but I actually prefer this. So, anyway, so we create our, our page. So now I have a page. Now I've got to decide myself what kind of lettering um, we, uh, am I going to go for. So, we obviously got to choose a font. If I come down here and choose a font, got the letter tool, the text tool, and I create a letter. Let's say if I was going to do my W. Oh my god, it's too small. 
So I'm going to increase the size of that. You can either do it up here with the point size of the lettering, so I could increase the size there, or I can just drag it. And if, oh, not quite like that. I don't do it. I don't want to save it yet. You should really save it as you go, really, but I don't need to. Because it's just a demonstration. So there's my letter, and as you probably noticed there, the uh, point size here increased as I dragged the letter up. Now, I do apologise, I'm not doing this by print, um, you know, from the screen itself, but I can't because I'm going to be transferring this all over. Because I'm doing it live, straight to the workshop, and I can't take my whole computer with me. It doesn't want to go that far, no. So I've got a letter. And now I can check what, select what sort of text I want that letter to be. So I'm going to highlight it. You don't have to highlight it. You can highlight it. I'm going to highlight it. And you can select whatever text you want. Now, you can, if you haven't got the right text to suit your needs, you can quite easily download more true type fonts. And there's loads of free ones. Sometimes they're limited license, but most of the time you can use them without any trouble whatsoever. So. Oh no! What? Duke Vengeance, you've caught. The blonde Boris mutant variant? What, with a big net? Or have you got COVID? Have you got COVID? Anyway, so I've got down here, I'll pick a letter text. Let's say for this is the one I've used. Which is tequila. Tequila. So there you go, there's tequila. But it's black. Now, I don't want to print all that out like that, do I? No. Not at all. Because I'm going to be wasted. Who do you want to think? It's also harder to follow the edge when you've got to transfer the marks over onto the piece of wood, anyway, and it's a waste, there's no need. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I'm going to make it white. So, yeah, let's, let's make it white and see what happens. So I go into, well, it's a little black block up top here, and then I select this one here, which is white, and it, it goes, oh no, but they can't see it, what am I going to do? Where is it? It's still there. It happens to be white on a white background, that's why you can't see it, but it is actually there. Now, the, the nice thing about this piece of software, um, has a little effects bar, and you've got your layers and adjustments, so you do all your levels and colour and contrast. We don't need to worry about that. But if you go into effects, you've got all these other little tools you can use. And one that's very useful for this job is outline. So I click on outline, and then I drag the radius, which is basically the size of the line, for the outline. So I've created an outline around the white letter highlighted the letter. Simple as that. So that is how I created this one with a Wally and this one with a bra. Very simple it is too. Okay, there you go. Make it a bit smaller. I don't know why folks can keep jumping in and out. And I see what you guys are saying. I don't ignore people, do I? Dee -dee 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 -dee. Oh, I beat her, hey Diddlin. Oh, uh, I've got that as well. I've got Affinity Designer as well. You could use that as well to do the same job, pretty much. Um, but because I use Affinity Photo nearly all the time, not I don't sleep with it, obviously, but I do use it a lot because um, I do a lot of photography. And it's very use very useful piece of software. So um, I, excuse my first go. I, I, I can prove I've got it as well. If you look down the bottom there, there, there is F Affinity Designer, just at the bottom. So I do use Finty Design, and that's really good, I like that too. Which you could use for this quite happily. But yeah, lots of people have got um, software like Photoshop, etc. So, I don't know, it may, may, makes more sense, I don't know. But there are some actually... No! Yeah, and if you do, you've got the Covid! Oh my god, my god! Is that like Farmer Giles? Do you want them, do you? No. Oh, sorry to hear that, mate. Uh, how are you feeling? Do, 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 do. Okay, so what we're going to do now, because I've already printed them off, and I use my laser printer to print them off. Let's, let's flip you around again. So it's glaring at my screen. Ooh, 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 oh, my God, look at that. There he is. I knew he was there somewhere. Darth Vader. Look, I am your father. Talk about Darth Vader. I've got Darth Vader there too. <laughs> is that bad? This is the size of him. <laughs> and then I've got Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm a bit crazy. So anyway, um, so now we've got them printed off. So there's some I prepared earlier. Blue Peter Styley. Yes, there you go. So there, there we go. They're my letters. And now we're going to transfer them over using this stuff. Now you've probably seen this stuff before. Yeah, this is carbon paper. Yes, I found it. I found my carbon paper because it was hiding. I couldn't find it anywhere, but I found it. So I've got the carbon paper. 
I've got my uh, me letters, and I'm going to transfer them onto my piece of wood in the workshop. So that's where we're going to go now. Oh, hello, Kit Kat. How you diddling? Yeah, um, you, you missed too much. I just basically showed how to create the, the letters using a piece of software. Do, 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 do. Called Affinity Photo. It's a bit like Photoshop. Okay, it's a bit like Photoshop. Um, but it does like cheaper, and I, I prefer it to be honest. So, anyway, let's go into the workshop, but make sure I take this other tripod with me as well, because this little one ain't going to cut the mustard, I don't think. I'm going to have to use that one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> da, 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 da. I don't know what the missus watch, I've been watching the news. Because uh, she does a bit of my research for me, for me other channel. Right, so. So there were letters. That's the carbon paper. So let's go to the workshop. Or was it the wood shop? Could be either. Or both. <laughs> yeah, same here, Duke. Oh, you feel a bit rough, do you? Oh, your whole family's got it. Good. Do you know what variant it is? Do you know if it's Omicron or, is it just, or have you had tests yet? It's my coffee. Oh my god, that's cold. No. Oh. Anyway, I'm going to go into my very, 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 very cold workshop. Do you like my screen? That size of that blooming thing is ridiculous. <laughs> well, because when I was editing a lot of videos before, it's very handy having a long screen because you've got your timeline. So yeah, anyway, I do like my toys. Uh, anyway, off we go. Out of this place. Say bye bye. Ta ta. Oh, you're cold, Caroline. You've got a blanket. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, she got back from England. So, through we go, through the kitchen. Oh, I'll show you something, I don't... Oh my God, it's a bit of a mess. It's a bit of a mess. But, you see this back, that, I, I made that from all offcuts. And that wood there, that's purple heart. It's a Brazilian hardwood, so it's one of the ironwoods. And, well, that's the colour of it. It's actually a little bit red. It's quite, it's actually like a very deep purple. So a mixture of oaks and chestnuts and walnuts and that on there. So yeah, that's my backsplash. <laughs> I made this kitchen out of offcuts. Yeah. If I can make it, I will. <laughs> anyway, it's going to try and it might go off a little bit in a second. So I might have to reconnect it to the workshop. So there might be a little glitch. So at the moment, I'm in between the house and the workshop. So I'm going to just transfer this over. So what's going to happen is... Okay. Oh, we're back. Should be okay now. Good. Okay. I'm the workshop internet. And then it started reconnecting. Maybe it was just a pause. Oh, I don't know. So, okay, we're in the workshop. Slipping cold. So I'm going to put this little electric heater on for a bit. For what good it does in here. Oh no, you're kidding me. Can you hear that? It's, it's gone squeaky. Why has it gone squeak? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to get the airline on it quickly. Because <laughs> I can't bother that. Right, so, I have got a bit of wood that I've sort of semi prepared. My workshop was nice and clean earlier, and now it's a mess again. No, it's still. Oh, that's better. What happens if the dust builds up on the fan and throws it out of, out of alignment? Oh, out of balance, sorry, not alignment, out of balance. So, what we have here is a piece of wood. There you go. That is what I'm going to be putting the sign onto. It's an old bit of wood that I had laying outside, a piece of oak. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to use it because it looked like it was covered in worm, but it was only on the surface. The rest of it is actually pretty solid. So, um, I wouldn't have used it for this job otherwise. <laughs> but isn't it great that you couldn't really use a piece of wood like this for furniture? Now the reason, well it depends what part of the furniture you're going to be using it for, I suppose. Because when you see the grain, it's all over the place. Because this would have been the limb of the oak tree, not the trunk itself. Because it's the limb, it could be all like windy and it's not straight. Um, and so the grey, if you've got a like, riff saw and something that like you use for like table legs or something like that, you'd be fine, but not this, this is not, there wouldn't, no, no. So I am going to be using it for 
this sign. Now I haven't got the radio mic on today because I forgot to charge it up. So there might be, if I wander off, I might get a bit cold and I might have to shout. Cold, a bit quiet. Got cold on the brain, it's because flip and freezing. <laughs> anyway, so we've got our letters. I've got to bring you right on top here in a second. <laughs> uh, I don't have to stick this onto the wood. No, all I'm going to be doing is literally transferring that onto that. It's using that, which is carbon paper. Now, carbon paper, oh, yeah, you must know what carbon paper is. If you're of my area, you, you most definitely will know what carbon paper is. Like, for instance, receipt books and all that sort of stuff. We'd have carbon paper in it. And uh, transfer a little bit of print from your writing on one bit of paper and transfer to the piece of paper behind. In this case, we're going to be transferring the print, or a little bit of ink, from this, via this, onto this. Yes, that's what we're going to do. But first of all, I need to sort of like align it where I want it to go. Because it's not going to be this whole piece of wood. No. Could you be a bit further away so you can see a bit better? I don't know what happened there again. It keeps losing connection. Isn't it a bit weak today, I think? Oh, you got wood! Oh, hello, Jasper, you diddling! Looks like a shower window. What looks like a shower window? <laughs> a beige blur? Who got a beige blur? Did, or did it... Oh, was it a connection again? Ah, oh, backsplash! Oh, you talking about my, my backsplash? Yeah, it's just... There's nothing wet on anything like that, but it has got um, lag on it. Oh, what super... Yeah, that's what it, what it was, is because I was coming from the house to the workshop and I had to transfer from one router to the other. So I've got an extender in here, you see, which is connected via an RJ45 cable to the main router. So I, want, I think it's steady down now. It's only over there, it's not a connection to the router, so it's, you know, if there's anything, it's going to be the internet a bit poor. I suppose it is Saturday night, isn't it? Ah, oh, I get you, Jess, but no, sorry about that, mate. Hopefully Bodge will come up to Walsall so I can... Coughing as fast. <laughs> okay, dude, you do that. <laughs> so I've got my letters. Right. I'm going to need something to cut it out, but obviously it's not... Well, I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't need to cut it out. Now, I know that I, I've got this piece of wood, which is more than long enough, but I know I want to finish here, so I'm going to go backwards. I'm like backwards, man. Who was that again? With the fingers. Oh God, um, I come to me with that American comedian, a bit odd. Tom Green, Tom Green, yeah, Tom Green. Now, on this piece of wood, it's got some planer marks, and I've got, for some reason, I've got some notches on my planer. When I run this piece of wood through that planer there, and created that lot, because the wood was wet, and it clogged the dust extraction up, so it all blocked up and made a little mess. And all this mess of the floor here is from when I was cleaning up these edges using the angle grinder with a wire brush in it. Just to get rid of all the old soft rubbish. Now, if Tommy Gunn was here, he'd be telling me, that's rotten! <laughs> that's what you are saying when I was making that bench. That's what you were saying. Right, so I'm going to transfer those to this. I know that... Where, I know where I want to finish, it's going to be about here. So these layers are going to come over here somewhere. And then I'll just line it up this way until, oh, okay, we're done. So, we need a piece of carbon paper. It lasts ages of stuff does, because, you know, you've gone how long I've had this for. Do, 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 do. Hey, that not many sheets left. There should be ten sheets in there. Oh, there is. There's loads of sheets left. I'm going to use a fresh one for this job. So I look professional. <laughs> I quite often use the stuff when I'm doing scroll sawing as well. If I want to transfer. If it's a simple, simple um, design, it's quite handy to transfer stuff over when you're using the scroll saw. Well, I say scroll saw, you know, the machine over there. I, I did a video the other week with it, if you remember. 
Now I have been doing many videos in here at the moment. I'll, my plan is I will be making very regular videos in here and also um, upstairs in the studio for Wally Bois. Um, but I've been a bit, oh, I don't know, I've, I had my head about my bottom to be honest. And also I've been trying to sort that out upstairs as well because it was just, well it's a mess of the room. Now I'm getting rid of, just getting rid of this tram line which came from the plane and there's, there's a couple of little lumps in the wood. The reason for that is I don't want it to influence the router when I run the router over it or transferring the marks onto the wood from the actual paper here. Yeah, what you do, you can use a sander, a DA sander or something like that from over here. The DA sander, that's one from the compressor. Well, it looks like I'm going to be busy with that machine over there to get rid of the, um, there's two notches in it, it seems. So I've got two marks for tram lines where there's a notch in the plane or in the blade. So, we have carbon paper. And I need a biro. I like to use a biro for this job, not a pencil. Yeah. So, I'll make sure it's the right way around, which is that way. The dull side goes down. I don't go right to the end, so. And the letters, they, 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 they're narrow at the top, and they're fatter in the middle. So I've got to bear that in mind when I, when I do it. I'm going to transfer them over. But to make life easier, where the straights are, I'm going to use a ruler. A rule, as my father would say. It's a rule, boy. It's not a ruler. It's a rule. I'll bring it in a bit closer. Do, 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 do. You don't have to see my face all the time, do you? I know, I know I'm, I'm such a looker. <laughs> so, I'm just using a ruler, or rule. A biro, and the reason I'm using the biro is because it's always the same width. When you use a pencil, it starts off thin and ends up thick. And also it rolls over the, um, the grain easier as well. So we'll speed up. Now, I, I'm, I'm not too fussed if it's a little bit um, inaccurate. It's artistic license, that's what I say. So we'll speed up in a second. Because a lot of it's going to be done with the router. This is just a guide, really, just to give me an idea of the shape of the letters. The rest of it will be just, you know, will be me uh, moving the router about how I feel it needs to be moved about, I suppose. Have that fat, move that fan down here, it's a bit noisy, I boys. Yeah, I'm um, luckily, as far as I know, I have not had the unfortunate experience of catching COVID yet. I say yet, because you never know. No, in as though that I would um, go anywhere where there is COVID, because I don't really go many places, <laughs> to be honest. But my grandchild, or grandchildren actually, not more than one now, um, goes to school. Although the school seems to be closing down one after the other at the minute. So I'm trying to go more of a sort of a flow with it. I don't want to have it too regimental. So I know where the edges are, if you understand what, I'm, what I mean. I'm trying to make it a bit more natural looking, sort of a bit of a wave to it. I don't want to go too far away, I need about the right distance, which is about there. And with this one's easy because it's all straights. Because it's an eye. Now, a lot of people are trying to get over to the UK at the moment um, on, our, on our 
travelled to France groups and what have you. Um, sort of between UK and France, there's a lot of people trying to get to the UK for Christmas, trying to find all these different routes. We can do this and do that. And some people actually managed to get to the UK, but they've had their passport stamped, even though they've got a carte de séjour. They're going to find it a little bit hard. They're getting back. And it's going to look a bit. It's going to be a bit awkward. What's going to happen? This. Because I don't even remember you doing a video before on my other channel. Where a lady, English lady in Gibraltar didn't get a pass, um, accidentally got a passport stamped, but she didn't have a return stamp on it, so she ended up getting in trouble. And they, they marked her passport as, um, I mean, they call it now, there's a term for it. Basically, she's an illegal. It showed that she'd been out of the country, or in the country for too long. Anyway, this is not a political channel, so I won't go into too much detail there. Now, this is a piece of oak. It's a very old piece of oak, actually. It's from a um, batch of wood that I bought. I'm straying from the line a bit there. <laughs> but like I said before, it doesn't really matter too much. Now, if I peel this away, you'll see... See? There's letters. Oh, that's what I want to see. I want to see the letters. Now, I want to keep that distance, really, from there. Sort of maintain it with the B. But I'm going to have to move that along. But I need to know where, that, where the next letter is, so... What I'll do is, with that there, I am going to put a mark here. Can you see that there? And I'll put a mark across the top of this B and transfer that onto the wood. Like so, just a rough mark. That'll give you some sort of idea. Because I want me to see it. Once I put the paper over and the, the carbon paper, I'm not going to be able to see where these letters are. So, that's the idea of that one. So, now if I move this back over. I'll be able to work out where the B comes, which is about there. I don't have to be in line, so I think I'm going to go down a bit, I think that. That's fine, okay. I'm happy with that. So we're going to follow that around there. It's a medium point pen, or I think it's fine. It might even be fine points. Not so good. You want a fat one, really? Fat pen. I used to do a lot of art at one time, but ever since I had my operation from a yeah, carpal tunnel operation, I've never been, I've lost a lot of control in my hand. Not dex dextrosity. Dextrosity. I can't say it now. And they look so. Oh, we're getting there. Like I say, it's not critical because you'll do that with a router. I say that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using a router to router these letters out. And then I'm going to highlight them in black so you can see the letters so they stand out. So now we've got our B. So we peel that away. There's a B. It's a bit wonky around the edges and stuff, but it doesn't matter. That's kind of the feel I want to go for anyway. And now we're going to have to do the wally. So that's going to be that way, so it's going to be a slight angle. So I'm going to start that one over here. I should have put that wood burner on. You know the wood burner that I made? Out of old wheel rims. That thing's brilliant. Works so well. Burns sawdust as well, which is quite handy. Most, most fires we put sawdust on, they go out. Not mine. No, it's special. It must be British. Do 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 do. Oh, you ready? Sorry about that. It's still there. Anyway, I see what people are saying anyway. But I'm getting a bit carried away here, aren't I? I mustn't ignore people. People mustn't ignore you, must we? No. Do 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 do. They are, oh, the Mad Duke Isles, are, well, oh, they have, they've been closed. <laughs> Not take art, take mark. <laughs> oh, yeah, take art, go on, that brings back memories. That's a good point, actually, Jasper. You could use the um, pyrography iron as well. Pyrography iron's like a soldering iron, so you can burn wood and do drawings or mark timber and stuff like that with it. If you watched my last um, live video, you, you probably saw I, I was using that um, 
Oh, to do, I don't know, I thought, what was it? Uh, little doggy, that's it, little dog. Um, but yeah, you could use it to mark, mark your wood as well. Only thing the one, my, my, I'd have to turn it right down, or you'd burn, I think you'd burn it too deep otherwise. But you could do that, yeah, that's not a bad idea actually. It's a very good idea. I've never done that way before, but it's not stupid is it, at all. What, what, do are you a COVID idiot? What? <laughs> A Dremel, and right, yeah, you like your Dremel, don't you? I, I had, well, my Dremel's. I, I got my Dremel out actually after you um, mentioned it the other day, and this flipping thing, the bearing's gone in it. Look, on the ends, it's all wobbly. So it's really inaccurate. So I, I need a new one, really. I could do some Dremel. So I'll tell you what I would like to get, um, Jasper. There's a, it's like a Dremel, but it's like a hand router more than a Dremel. So it's like a carving machine. But you can use them, it's got a chuck on the end, so you can use them as a Dremel as as well. And it's like a motor that hangs foot above with a umbilical cord sort of thing. And on the end you've got your chuck. And a brain for carving. I, mean, I, I, I really want to get myself one of those. Oh, oh everyone went. Oh, you're back again. Okay. Ah! Oh! You fly aeroplanes. Because I do too. I'm building one at the moment, actually. Um, oh, there's a kit that was given to me. That's a, you might know it. It's the Electrofly. It's quite an old kit. It's, it's quite a nice plane. Um, I built the wheel. I've got to cover it and put, finish it off. Yeah, so... Oh, there you go. I do fly drones mainly these days. It's a bit lazy, really, I know. But I do like my drones. I keep droning on, they do. <laughs> they remind me of me. All right, where was I, anyway? I'll, let's get... Get to it. Oh. I've already done that bit. Keep falling the grain. Don't want to fall the grain. No. The text that I'm using, the font, is called tequila, if anyone's wondering. I chose it because it's, it sounds alcoholic. Talk about, I've got a glass of wine over there. How long brought me a glass of wine in, into the workshop? I don't know if it's a good idea, but... She did, bless her heart. She didn't feel too good at the moment because she's um, she had a gallbladder out um about two years ago. We nearly lost her because she had um, septicemia, and she's never been right since. She has um chronic stomach pains, which is quite horrible at times for a poor girl. Better watch what she eats. Can't have gluten. She's got to keep her fat content down to an absolute minimum. Um, and she must she must she finds that she eats too late past five, six o'clock in the evening, or afternoon now, sorry, or well, sort of the evening, early, early evening, I say. Um, so she, she lays down at all, she can't, the, the uh, bile in, a, in, a, in from the, I think it's the pancreas, pancreas, anyway, the bile, the bile gets trapped, it doesn't flow, and she gets huge, well, really bad. It's, it's not good. These things are sent to try us. Right, so you've got a what? An elf? Got to have the elf, the further around here. You know what I mean? You are enough. Dee 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 dee. dee. Well, I'm trying to come up with project ideas to do on here because I want to do some time lapse videos. I've used to do them before. They're just like, um, you think of like lots of time lapse, like loads of short video clips coming together to show a whole project, but we were in a relatively short period of time. You know, usually no more than like five, five minutes to avoid, yeah, keep people's attention. And there's other ones I've done like that before where I've done like a voiceover. So I start off with an introduction and do a voiceover. I used to do a lot of um, videos for Wally Bar before, but then the other the channel sort of took over. I kind of regret it in some ways. I should have just carried on with Wally Bar, to be honest. In some ways, not in other ways. I'm not, I'm not in the case, but um, I've I've learnt one. I've learnt a lot though, a lot um, since doing the other channel. And, you know, coming from this channel, and now I'm come back to it again. So um, I'm still doing the other channel, but I'm not. I'm, I need I need to be a little bit more. It's it'll get me down to be honest. So we've got to do another L, but I need to use the next L. Oh, that's silly of me, wasn't it? So it's halfway across, about there. So it is... about there. Right. 
Let's stop that going. Ooh. Go. Right there. Ooh, maybe a bit further up. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, dear. Decisions, decisions. I get it, I'll do. I know you use the same L, but this one's actually slightly smaller than that one, you see. So they kind of like zoom in and out. We'll be there in a minute. We'll all finish all letters to go, then we'll get that route route. And we'll start routing the letters. There you go. It's all two more letters to go. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So now we've got an A. So where that's going to go? It's going to be slightly up, like sort of. <laughs> right, that'll do. That's good. We'll do that W. That W's going to be sort of up there. Sorry about that. Stay. What are you doing there? Oh, I see. There, do. I better just uh, crease that leg a little bit. Bear with me. There you go. <laughs> Don't keep falling over. <laughs> right, it's got my, my mark there. That's line up with this A, which is about. I just realised there's two sheets of carbon paper here. That's not very good. Right there. That's going back there. Yeah. I should be using the ruler, but it's too slow. So if I was doing this as an edited video, what I'd have done, I'd have fast forwarded all this bit. It's going to get a bit tedious, I've always. But they'll get exciting in a minute. Get that rotor out, make some noise, and uh, show them basically what you can, what you can do. Well, it's a relatively simple tool, really. There's nothing, there's nothing really that amazing about a rotor. Well, if you saw us down Ginger Island, you'd probably be watching Graham at Ginger Island um, making signs of that as well. Oh, I thought he was doing quite well in the end. Right now, it's got the now it's got the W. Last letter. Oh god, a mess of that. There you go. <laughs> but it doesn't matter too much because that won't be the final letter. The final letter's gonna be done with the router. Now before I start routing this, what I'll do is I'll wax it all as well. We've just put a candle wax, and the idea being is it allows the machine to glide, yeah, to slide over the piece of wood. Or well, well, easier, freer. Now, there's another little tip for you if you've got a wooden chest of drawers and you're pulling, you pull, try to pull your drawers out, not those drawers, the chest of drawer drawers, and uh, they get they're all sticky in that, and you're like, almost like pulling the unit over. Well, just get your old candle and just rub some candle wax on the drawer runners, and lo and behold, they should slide in and out lovely. That's what we do. That's what I've got, I've got um, like a tall boy thing I've used in my studio upstairs. And that's um, sort of done with that, because that's doing the same thing. Plus our walls, walls, our floors are all over the place in that house. That's an old farmhouse after all. Right, so they are the letters all transferred on over. I you can see that. So we've got, let's put the white around. So there's Wally. Well, at this stage, it's a very good idea to double check that you spell everything correctly. Otherwise, it could get really, really annoying if you find halfway through you've made a huge mistake. Like, for instance, you missed the letter out or used the wrong letter, or you've just learnt the fact that you can't spell. That would be very annoying, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, so, just see what people are saying. 
You're down there. Oh, oh, so funny. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Jinder. How you diddling? Oh, you do for a booster, right? Oh, that's a bit late for that now, mate. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll have to horse bolt that one, that Oh, you had the gold bladder, right? Did you gingers? Okay. Oh, 1989. Crikey, when you were 26. God, that's no age ever that age. It's quite common in um, the Caroline's age. You know, not 26. You, oh, you had laser, the first laser removal in... Oh, crikey, that's interesting. No problems. Yeah, of course, problem with. Yeah, no, Caron, because um, they had to do it as well. Like the, well, what they did is had to give her loads of antibiotics first because she um, intravenous to get the infection down. She was just, just gone down there and actually in hell of a way. And um, once they got in control of that, they then, a week later, they, they then booked her in to have the um, gallbladder out because it wasn't just the gallbladder, her lip was it liver. I think the liver was had infection in it as well, and had a big old scrape around, so shit wasn't really nice. Not great, no. And she hasn't been the same since. She gets tired a lot. She probably pissed off at me, really. <laughs> right, let's see what people say. I'm gonna get the router in a second. Now, with the router, what you got is a machine like this one here. This is an amicator. Covered in dust, as you can see, because everything does in the workshop. But I do use this quite a lot, this router. And it's an 1800 watt router. Is it the, I think it's 1800. Or was it? No, yeah, it's 1800. 1800 watt router. Um, half inch, which means it takes half inch shank bits. Cuts, which are here. <laughs> wax on, wax off. That's right, Jasper. Um, so you've got your half, half inch shank on your bits. Now I've got three cutters here. Um, I might be using them all or I might just use that one but looking at this I might need that one <laughs> which is smaller. Um, it's a bit dull, I might find a sharper one though. You can sharpen these with, with, a, with a diamond sharpener but you just sharpen the flats. You don't, if you're a big one I'll show you that. We don't try and sharpen the edge like you might do with a knife or something, you only flatten off the flat with a flat diamond sharpener. So you just, if you keep sharpening that, pop, polishing that off with, uh, with a diamond sharpener, eventually that will get sharp, you see. So it's quite, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, you'll be surprised actually, there's a lot of things in France are actually in Imperial. Good. Yeah. Such as all the actual uh, taps and what have you are actually imperial, but they're done in, say, for instance, half inch is 1521, um, but that's actually half inch, but it's all BSP. All the tap fittings, all the, you know, the screw-on fittings, all BSP, which is British Standard BSP, British Standard thread or something like that, British Standard something anyway, um, British Standard pitch, I don't know, anyway, they're BSP. So it's, it's the same thread rating as what you have in the UK, for, for you know, for the pipe. You know, for the plumbing, but the actual pipe sizes they they in France they do a lot of tapered pipe pipe work. They do, use a lot of brazing as well, but they gauge the pipe, its size of the pipe for its expected flow. So, for instance, you start off I don't know twenty two mil. They do have twenty two mil there. It will be all, uh, old money be three quarter, three quarter, no three quarter, twenty two mil, and that be eighteen mil, three quarter, yeah, eighteen mil, um, three quarter, and then they go down to twenty two mil. Sorry, and then you get eighteen mil. You've got 16, 14, 12, 10, and it goes down, down, down. Just to complicate matters. Everything is complicated. <laughs> to make things awkward. In the UK, that's like, you know, you'd have, you'd have your 10 mil, and then you'd, go, you'd jump up to 15 mil, and then you'd jump up to 18. Um, no, don't ever use 18, do you? It'd be 22 mil. So, yeah, it was 18 mil. can't remember now. 20 mil, 22 or 18. Oh, I can't remember anyway. Um, I haven't done plumbing for ages. So, yeah, them a bit. So, I'm going to rig them up in this router, set the depth, uh, and I've got a freehand rotor with this, but also I'm going to clamp the bit of wood down to the bench so it doesn't move about. When you try and move the rotor about, you're not trying to move the wood at the same time. Um, I'm not going to cut it too deep, not as deep as the one I've done outside, um, which I showed earlier at the beginning of the video. Hopefully, um, it wasn't too blurry. <laughs> So, 
cycling you over. So, oh. Yeah, it's like for instance, if you talk about our uh, half inch, it's 12.7 millimeters. So, yeah. But they do use, that's the measurement they'd use for a ranger hair. Although they do, they also use 8 millimeter, 6 millimeter. Right, but it's just, oh, I just wish that everyone would just standardize things. I mean, life a lot easier and a lot cheaper for people. And there we go, I suppose they're making less money. So, the carbon paper, I need to put that out of the way. Oh, and all it is really is a, it's a sheet of, sheet of paper with some carbon, like, you know, like you're, you're, you get a pencil. Yeah, and it, it creates the impression. It transfers the mark. So how's my battery doing? That's a good point. I'll keep an eye on that. I've got a battery pack in my pocket, just in case. I'm on you. This is annoying. I'll do that later. Oh, oh dear, dear, dear. Well, I'm light on the subject. Do 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 do. do. Hopefully, the frequency is okay. That's good. Fine. Router clamp, we need a clamp. Clamp the stand. And some wax. Got a couple of G clamps. One on each end. Now when I built this bench, I put a lip all the way around the outside of the bench in oak and that's my clamping lip so that way I can I'll show you I can quite easily clamp to the edge of the bench Now when I came back from uh, Ginger Island, a lot of my tools I found was that uh, surface rust on everything, <laughs> which um, just dampened the air. It's like a dusting of, of rust. If you got a... What I should have done was um, give everything a light like coat of oil. Now this pick the router. It's fitted with a special collar, and um, that was an extra what I got for this router. You notice know, you use a little Allen key, a little hex, hex key for that. It's a lot easier, a lot less fumbling about. All I use is that, and for that, now I'm tight and loose now. Really good. So I'm going to start off probably with a smaller one, not a fine sharp one though. I don't want it to be too deep because for one thing it'll be a lot of load on the router but also on me. As I say that means deep as in into the wood. Create more force. So I'm going to use this. Now if you were going to be um, routing this out and you're going to paint it or something like that straight away without extra sanding, don't use wax. You have to find something else to use. Otherwise you'll be putting wax on here, whatever finish you put on there will basically won't end, won't stick. And if you want to put oil on it, it won't soak through. But you'll see why later, why it doesn't matter. Because the way I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to run a bit of wax all over. It's hard enough actually cutting the actual letters to be you know, um, hard work. So why, why, why make it hard for yourself? Just a bit of candle wax and add a few time like so. On the bottom here, you could use a bit of PTF spray if you want. 
Right, that'll do the job. Now I'll decide on how deep I want to cut. So I'm going to do that using the, um, the depth uh, gauge, or the depth stop, I should say, which is on this side here. There's quite a nice design on this one. You've got a little brass button that you push down, and the actual adjustment goes in and out quite easily, like so. Or you can screw it in and out as well to do the fine adjustment. But I've got to decide on how um, deep I want that cut to be. Now, to do it the easy way of doing this is you can set it whatever. Um, let's say, for instance, I want. That's, I know that's half inch. Let's say, for instance, I want the letters to be a half inch deep. It's probably about right. All I've got to do is you see this sort of like stop at the moment. If I pull, pull that out and then place it in there like so. I'm creating free space there. But before, actually, before you do that, though, you need to set this so the bit is onto your workpiece. So the bit itself, the cutter, touches the piece of wood. So you do that first. I was going to get carried away there. And then, demonstrate my mistake, I suppose. And then you set the depth. And I'm using the, the route, a cutter shank as my, my depth gauge. Quite a useful idea is to actually have a load of, load of um, little bits of wood or different things or bits of metal and different thicknesses and they all uh, like 10mm, 5mm, whatever. <coughs> Just makes it quick and easy. But I haven't done that. So I'll plug this in over here. And I'll plug this. Oh, what I want. That one. Now move this heat because the router. It's 80 ohms watt, this is 2 kilowatt, so I've got to put it in a different... And this bench is literally on a fly lead that goes under the floor to a socket over there. So I don't want it into the same socket, so um, I'll put it over here and see. Oh, so flipping cold. I don't like the winter. I'm a fair, I'm a fair weather workshop man. They're going to be in the summer, we'll be complaining that it'll be too darn hot. Alright, so I'll set the actual router to depth. You could even set it so it's actually it's always fixed if you like. There's another depth stop here on the back of the on this particular router. Not all routers have this one, this, this fit setting. Yeah, this is a lovely, really good router. I've had the years, but it's a really good router. So, that's soft start as well, even better. So I'm going to bring it a bit closer. I'm going to have a swig of wine so it'll help my concentration. <laughs> That's got a rotor kit there. So it's um, basically it's got a cutter in it, such as that. Spins at a very high revolution, and I can tell you how fast, up to 12,000, so up to 23,000 RPM, so 23 times that will turn every minute at full speed, but it's got very variable speed on it. So, um, you don't want it too fast for a hardwood, because what, or a blunt bit, because <laughs> you just burn your way through, you'll create too much friction. So, I'm going to be using it on four, which is about 15,000 um, RPM. Get to it. Let's get digging with it. Oh. Right, so I've got some light on the matter. Well, I think half inch is too deep, so I'm going to readjust for the size of the letters. It's, it looks over the top, so I've gone down halfway, so it's going to be. Near eight mil, I think. Yeah, eight mil.
Right, I've just gone around the outside edge of the W. It's not finished. I'll sort of give you an idea of what it'll look like, so bring it a bit closer. So that's the W, upside down. <laughs> Just get the airline. Now you see, I haven't taken out the meat from the middle here. Like, for instance, that's got to be removed as well. And I could carry on with this this bit that's in there, which is the smallest bit. It's only a little old bit. So that is only an 8mm cutter. Um, or I could then say, okay, then I'll, I'll put a big one in the middle in a minute and finish it off with that, which I might do. So I'm going to do the, or an outside edge first using the, the small bit and then finish off with the big bit. So I'm going to finish off with a big one in a minute, that's good. Let's do an A! Cheerleader. Let's put that inside there a little bit, that's it. Hopefully you can see. Maybe I'll turn that microphone around. <laughs> it might be a bit noisy. <laughs> So we'll be stopping as I go and checking on the messages, but also I don't want to ring your ears too much with this noise. This is all fluffy at the moment, but that won't matter later. You'll see why. Oh, it's getting interesting there. It's got an A. Now this sign, if you wonder what it's for, is for the, the studio upstairs. And he's doing all shorts one as well. There you go. <laughs> See what you guys are saying. Guys and gals. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of right there, Duke. It's like a little milling machine. In fact, if you um if you know about milling what have you, do you know about CNC machines? A woodwork and CNC machine is basically uh, a digitised mill, but with a woodwork router in it. And you can do all this sort of stuff. So you could do it on, uh, so you could sketch up, for instance. You could use that as a piece of software, and from that you could then transfer it to your CNC machine. And then your CNC machine, your uh, something cut, <laughs> and then just, and it's done. How lazy is that? <laughs> <laughs> but repetitive, so you can create the same thing again and again and again. They're really, really good. I would like one, but I ain't got the sort of size I would want, because I'd want one for baking staircases for my work. So um, when you're doing the actual uh, string for the staircase, you know, where, the, where you slot the treads into, CNC machines are perfect for that job. So I'd like one long enough to be able to do a three metre length of timber, at least. So um, that would be quite good. But I can't afford it and I've got room, so I'll be doing that. There you go. <laughs>
Now when you're writing these letters, like, if you can notice, because the bit is round, the corners end up round. Well, the, the corners originated square. But I'm not worried about that. No. It's still going to have the effect that I want, so I'm quite happy with that. So, it's not a problem. So I'm going to blow this out as I go. That's from my air compressor, which is in the bar next door. Otherwise it's really noisy if you go listen to that thing going. So there you go, that's an, that's an L. Another L. Oh, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Sounds good to me. Now the thing about when you're doing cutting letters like this, using a router, it's, you, it's quite easy to be nervous about it, and you end up going too slow, and you're more likely to get a wobbly line when you go slow. If you can, if you can create, you sort of lock yourself off, so you're holding the router, you sort of hold, it's like you're locking your muscles off, and you control it, you don't let the router control you, you're controlling the router. Um, it will try and control you somewhere, because the cutter's trying to cut on one side of the piece of wood and pull the router over constantly. That's good, one reason why it's a good idea to use a smaller bit to cut the outside first. Uh, VASF Tech. I don't know what that is, Cora. I do it. Uh, yeah, um, you've got to start somewhere, though, haven't you? And you don't have to have loads and loads of equipment. There's lots of woodworking things you can do with, you know, with limited equipment. And if you, if, and if you like for instance, if you want to um, even wood burning, for instance, that's really creative. Using bits of wood, what have you, and just using effectively a soldering iron. And create some lovely stuff. But this furnace you want to make, well, unfortunately, you, you, well, I think you need quite a bit of gear, really. You know, for accuracy, um, and also to be competitive, unless you're just doing it for yourself. If you're doing it for yourself, well, time, in time isn't really issue, it's, it's more of a therapy. That's the nice thing about woodworking, woodworking is a bit for therapy. It's actually, it's something about working with wood, it's actually very, very nice. Um, you get an old bit of, crappy bit of timber, and you can make it into something that's, well, other than put it on the fire, basically, it's just this piece here. This piece of wood here it was it's still wet because it's been out in the blue rain. It's not too bad now; it's dried off a bit. Um, but if you see all this stuff here, this is what I got off. It. This is not. This isn't from the planer. This is that was on the surface on it, which I took off with the angle grinder with a wire brush in it. So that's how much soft rubbish was on this timber. So instead of running it through the planer first, I got rid of it first, and then run it through the planer. And that was a reasonably thickish piece of wood, wasn't it? That, well, I, I probably took about 15 mil off it. So quite a bit I took off, but it, was, it wasn't usable. You know, it was like that. <laughs> but underneath it, we have this, actually, there's actually a really solid piece of oak behind it. You know, it's better than wasting it. Why, why waste it? No need. It's like my de um, desk upstairs in the studio. Boards on there, they were all like that, all rotten. No, they look rotten. So we remove all that, you get rid of all that waste material. Using the ang angle grinder, yeah, little, four, yeah, little four inch angle grinder, like I showed earlier, such as this one. With a wire brush in it like that. Maybe not that one's a bit coarse, this one is. Um, obviously, I haven't put the guard on. <laughs> uh, and effectively, you just remove all the waste with the grain, and that takes all this, anything that's soft gets chucked out and leaves all the hardwood behind. Uh, unless it's completely utterly rotten, you'll have nothing, yeah, that should be absolutely fine. Otherwise, you'll have nothing left. It'll just be dust. <laughs> oh, God, how you diddling? Will I round at the edges? No, I want to keep this weighing edge. Or do you mean the edges of the actual letters themselves, do you mean, Jasper? Um, 
I kind of, I, I'm a bit natural around around the edges myself, so I kind of like that natural look. <laughs> so I'm, I'm keeping with the weighing edges of the board. Obviously I'll clean them all up and make them look nice. Um, but I, for the job, especially the job I want to use it for, it, I'm trying to go with this kind of like woody sort of look. Because the space upstairs, I know I've been using it for the other channel as well, the studio. I do want to use it for the woodwork as well, so I'll try and keep it on point. Because I've been, bit by bit, if it had this look, what can I do? It looks a bit odd at the moment, it's a bit strange in the sense there's a big void above my head and I don't know, I'm not 100% happy with the space, so um, I just want to make it a bit more... I like quirky because I'm a kind of quirky person I suppose. Oh, I've got something come today, but that's for the other channel. But I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I, uh, hopefully I can get this sorted out, something sorted out. Um, Soon, hopefully by Christmas, because it's going to be funny as hell <laughs> for the other channel. But I'm not going to tell you. No, keep you waiting. It's suspense. But it will be coming. <sighs> Shall I give you a hint? No, no hints. I can't see the bottom of that there. Oh, I see it there. It's there. <coughs> the problem is when you're out and you can't see where you're, but you're following the line, but you don't know where the line's going because the base is in the, on top of the lines. So you're kind of following the best that you can. go and then we'll be um well make sure it's clean make sure make sure i've got everywhere on the bottoms removing the excess waste because these, these, these bits are obviously going to be removed um and then we'll be painting it and then oh i'll show you in a minute don't tell you don't let oh, don't tell you all the secrets just yet do i know so i'm just trying to make anyway from start to finish i sort of show um live all warts and all how I make the sign from right at the beginning of if you if you just come along from right at the beginning of this video um I showed what I'm trying to create how I created these and then the actual what we're doing here so I started off outside went into the office created those and now we're in the workshop
Looking good. In the middle, I'm going to have to move the clamp because it's going to get in the way of me hands. Hands up, do dish. Sorry, I'll shut up. <laughs> right. Let's see what you're saying. Dee, 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 dee. Don't ignore you, do you? Have a, oh, you're feeling a bit tired there, Duke. There, yeah, you go have a dap, mate. Take care, Jen, there. Do some dog paws. Could do. <laughs> I don't know if I left enough room on the end for that. Could have done, I should have done that. That's a good idea. That would have been. All right, let's get the next one then. So what we'll do now, I'll do an, uh, an O. Oh. There you go. <laughs> let's do the O. No, I'm not doing high, but before I do that, let me move this over and also I'll plug the battery pack in, or one of the battery, yeah, this battery pack, into the camera just in case. Not in it happening. Hopefully, it should be charging. Yeah. So now I'll move this clamp. I'm going to do that, I'll move that over half. So I can then clamp on there instead. Now when I actually cut the um, router out of the excess, that'll be easy, that'll be. Because <coughs> you don't all down the edges, so just case just keep them to the space and just removing it. Bit by bit. Place the cutter, it's probably a bit warm, that is. So you've got to mind your fingers if you're doing a lot of this sort of work. You can burn them on the cutter. But if your cutter is, um, well, actually, should get too hot, it's just warm. If it's getting hot, it means your, your bit is actually probably blunt. A lot of friction. So I've got to decide which size up do I go up to? Do I go the full half inch or do I go to that 10 mil instead? Do I think the half inch is going to be too much? So I'm going to use a 10 mil. There you go. Ready? Don't forget to unplug your router before you do this, because that's what I forgot to do. Like an idiot, that I am. Okay, that's in. 
So I've got to reset the depth of the cutter. It's not, really, it's not going to be the same. So I'll pick somewhere where it's already wide enough, such as here. I'm going to plug that in there to set the depth of the router. So basically all I've got to do, because it's, um, if I carried on using this as it is, because there's now this gap here underneath this stop, all I end up doing is I end up cutting too deep. Which you don't want to do, so to check that before you carry on, if you are going to change your bit over, you might decide to carry on with a smaller bit. But what you'll find is if you use the bigger bit, the bottom of the actual letters will be a bit flatter because, you know, any rocking on here will be transferred to the bit. Oh, if you're making this for an exterior display, what type of finish would you recommend? Now, it really depends. I like natural finishes. I like linseed oils and stuff like that. So that's what I've done outside. But you don't have to. Um, I would use a... Personally, I like polyurethane varnishes, um, such as yacht varnishes, really, polyurethane yacht, yacht varnishes. But you need several coats. The other op option you have, which would work very, very well, would be an epoxy resin um, an epoxy finish. But that's expensive and, yeah, you don't really want to be going there. But, var but just a varnish. I wouldn't go for anything like Sadlands or any of those so-called like, stains. Because all they are is a coloured varnish. You might as well paint it brown, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> um, if you did want to give it a colour, stain it first. If, whatever colour you want to give it, whether you just want to give it a walnut or something, just a bit, a bit darker, you want stain. But if you're going to be painting the letters, you don't want the actual back, you don't want the rest of it being too dark. Because uh, you, you wouldn't see the letters, would you? So, yeah, linseed oil, that's, that's what I'm going to use. Um, just ordinary boiled linseed oil. You can either boil it yourself, but I don't recommend it because linseed oil is volatile and you have to boil it to about 180 degrees Celsius and when you know it's ready is when it stops bubbling. But do it outside, yeah. Somewhere safe where no one's going to knock it over because at 180 degrees, that get on you. Whoa, you're going to know it. Yeah, to the bone. Ah! Yeah. yeah, it's not great. So um, when you boil linseed oil, uh, but they call it boiled linseed oil. Technically, it's not boiled linseed oil. They put solvents in it, um, which basically... The reason why you have to boil it, you're removing the water. There's a certain very small element that's wa water, and what that does, it retards the linseed oil from hardening, so you're trying to remove that water. So what they do is these days, they put... I don't know what, what um, solvents they use, top of the head, um, but they put solvents in it to l allow the linseed oil to harden much faster. Yeah, a bit useless information for you. But if you do boil it yourself, be very, very, very careful. And it still takes a little bit longer than actual bought boiled linseed oil to harden. But that's what I'd use, linseed oil, because it soaks in. And the first few coats of it, I'll, I would mix it with a little bit of um, spirit, whether it be a bit of white spirit or, or turpentine's even better. I know all these things aren't organic, what have you, but the, my, my point is, if it lasts longer... Well, the detriment of the actual chemical that you're using is kind of... I'd have thought it's counteracted, because you're not going to... Oh, I've got to make another one. I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a balancing act, isn't it? Yeah, trying to be environmental, it really is. I do do my best, to be honest. All this, this is, it's been powered by solar, believe it or not. That's a good boy. <laughs> Bugger cop to 86, what load of plava that was. That was ridiculous. Made no sense at all.
The nice thing about using linseed oil is because it's so easy to put on. You can literally splash it all over, or you can put a bucket of it if you like, and just splash it all out of the bucket, all over it, and just drain it off. That's all you need to do, then wipe the excess off with a rag. That's the beauty about lid seed oil. So the next time you want to um, put some treatment on it again, it's more lid seed oil, say years, two years time, or whatever you want to do, it's really quick and easy. It's not like, oh God, I've got a varnish it and all that sort of stuff. It'll take ages, get sand off, do No, you just get your linseed, a little pot, and paint a load more on. Oh, there it is, my compressor. Really good. See what I'm doing? Bit there, bit there. So that's basically what you got. This one here, I need to clean it because when I started removing the waste with the bigger bit, I adjusted the bit for some reason it was a little bit on the deep side. So um, what I'm going to do is go around this again with a smaller bit afterwards. That one was fine, so I readjusted it, and that's fine now. So now I can carry on now and remove the waste from these ones. Now they are. <clears throat> How am I going to make these letters stand out? All I'm going to do is get the old aerosol can of, of black, you use a um, brush if you want, and I'm going to paint those all over. Don't matter if I get some on here, it won't matter. You'll see why when I get that far. Oh. But when you get, yeah, obviously um, this has taken longer because I'm, I'm obviously recording at the same time and I'm yapping and you know, it takes longer, but it's actually a really quite quick job to do. And when you get the hang of it, you don't really have to use this. I just want to show the process. Um, for this one, I would have done anyway, to be fair. But it works. Just me in videos! Hello there, how you doing, boy? Uh, actually, I say boy, I don't know if you're, if you're, if you're a man or a woman. No. <laughs> so think about it, um, yeah. Hey, this isn't it. Uh, well, gee, would cutting the edges of the letters out have been easier with a smaller palm router? Or is there the advantage using the big... Yeah, you could use palm router. I do have a palm router, which is on the wall at the back. I see that over there? That's my Makita palm router. And I use that a lot. Yes, if you're doing small, smaller signs... Remember, this is oak. Oak is flipping hard. Um, you could use a small, like, 500, 600 watt palm router. Um, no problems at all. The only thing I, I would say is because you've got the weight in that in that router, it helps control. It does. Because it's whole, the, weight, the whole weight of it, it just creates stability. I actually find the palm router a little bit harder to use and because you grip the way you have to grip it, it's it, your hands, you know, you get like trigger finger in your hands, it would just lock your hands lock up. Um, whereas this you've got two nice two big handles. And the weight of it holds itself. So it's, I prefer using this than the palm rail. But I do use the palm rail if I'm doing um, smaller signs. But also if they're not as deep. I'm, at the moment I'm cutting down to about 8, eight to 10 mil in depth. Um, well, about 8 mil. Yeah, about 8 mil now. So the thing is, not this way, but when I was doing the other sign outside, they're like, three quarters inch deep because the letters are much bigger. So um, for me, I, I prefer the, the bigger router for this job. I wouldn't have said that before. Until I started using it, you know, I, I bought the route because it was, you know, going to be easy. I thought it'd be easier, but I don't think it is actually, to be honest.
Lovely jubbly. Move on to the B. You can say it easy that moves across because that's the max. Just, yeah. Oh, you, well, this actually. Actually, um, it's a block wax, this is a paraffin wax that you can buy to do preserves. You can put the wax on top of your jam and stuff like that to seal your jam off. I just cut it into blocks, small blocks. Same stuff, just paraffin wax. Works well. Yeah. experiment was with uh, at some point is literally filling these letters if I use a stable material this might move a bit too much but if you're using something like um well it depends how dry it is to be honest but you could fill these with resin colours resin if you wanted to and then run them through, sand them all off and polish them off and then you'll have all your letters to be in coloured resin I think that'd look quite cool See what you're saying. <laughs> oh, it just be very cool. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you use a st stain just to um, create the colour that you want. You then put a varnish or and then sit on top of that. But you, you know, if you're going to be doing with the letters that I'm doing here, these are going to be black. And I'm just going to basically paint this with, with you know, with black paint. And then I'm going to remove the excess. So it's really easy to do. So you just spray around and wherever, don't matter where it goes. And you're going to remove it anyway. Three more letters to go.
What you be careful of when you've got these letters like this one here, and you've got this point on the top of this this A, it's quite easy to knock it off of the rotor with a bit, you get a chunk of it, because the grain's going that way, you see, so it's vulnerable. So you have to be really careful, so I'm not going to go too mad there, I'm quite happy with that anyway. That's fine. Fine, oh, onto the W, the last letter. Oh, hand not quite. <laughs> It's especially um, vulnerable because you've got all these points, so you can quite easily knock them off. Looking good. I've got that all. All the letters are now being carved with the router. Wally. Bois. If you know, bois means wood. So it's Wally Wood. Not that kind of wood, no, saucy. So look what cool. So now what I want to do now is just want to quickly. Uh, I'm just going to use a sander on here just to sand these edges because you get the fluff. All right. Well, I've got fluff baby because the wood's damp because I got outside. So we can use a sand. I'll first I'll try this one first. A little DA, if that don't work, if it ain't enough, I'll have to use the angle grinder with a sand disc in. <laughs>
I'm just going to get a bit of sandpaper in here now just to get rid of this fluff. A bit of bum fluff. Just use a bit of a 180 grit. I'm going to just take it around here. Just get rid of a little bit of that fluff on these edges. That's where the end grain is, so let's just get rid of that end grain. What's quite, works quite well. There's a, there's a, a Dremel, Jasper, <laughs> with um, a little flap of wheel in. I'm not too far. If I was doing a castle, I'd be a little bit more, um, how to put it, finicky. It looks for me. Well, yeah, um, you've got to see, see that anyway at the distance. You're not going to be like that, are you? Ooh, look at that, it's a fluffy. <laughs> no, you're not going to do that. I hope you wouldn't anyway, it's sounds strange if you did. But you've got issues. We're moving from the old carbon paper marks as well while you're doing this at the same time. That's a rubbish bit of sandpaper that is. Use a bit of, oh, a bit of carbide paper, I shouldn't use. It's good. I'm happy there. Oh, not that bit there, but this is what you keep doing, and you'll find more and more and more, wouldn't you? God, that's rubbish, rubbish piece of sandpaper. I don't recommend that. I've got a little bit, little bit careful, don't want to take it. Yeah, the video has been crazy long, but it doesn't need it. So you could use, you could paint, the, you could paint it if you want, or you can, yeah, with a brush. Or you can use an aerosol. This is just aerosol from Action. For two euros a can. Pretty cheap. So what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to paint those letters. And yeah, I'll go around the edges. Oh my god, no, he didn't see it. Oh my god, what's he doing? I'm not worried. This is when I run out of paint. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? It's not a very cool can. You obviously, if you use a brush paint, you can. Um, it's got to take a lot longer to dry. I've got everywhere. Oh dear, that won't be a problem. Don't worry. Don't worry, you pretty little self. No. Because once it's dry, I'm gonna sand it off. The only problem we've got now is it's going to take a while to dry. I hope it'll take too long to dry. Let's not overdo that because it'll take ages to dry. Another thing for the rotor. Plug this heater back in. And hopefully, it'll dry a bit quicker. Now at this stage, I'll remove any excess material, um, paint if I want, get a rag or a bit of tissue. It doesn't matter. But if you've got time, which I haven't, because to make the video ridiculous, if I want paint dry, that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Who wants to watch paint dry? Not me! So I want to remove some of the excess. Now I'll probably put another coat on here later, um, once it's, you know, after the video, just to get the colour, to get it really dark. At that moment, I need to obviously think about you guys and gals watching this, and obviously the saved video at the end. 
it's just gonna, you know, makes too long, doesn't it? Not video medicine, is it? It's actually quite like the, um, <laughs> the black stain. So what I'm gonna do now, well, I'll just check these messages, see if we get a little bit drier. Get some warmth on here. See, you watch paint dry? No, don't do it. That's desperate watching paint dry. Now, you probably notice acetone. You could, uh, uh, we'll work with this acetone. No, acetone would actually. Acetone. Yeah, we use acetone when I'm doing fiberglass work. So, um, dissolve it. Oh, wash your hands with acetone. Glad in cold it is. No paint in the middle of the A. There is. Well, it's a bit pale, but I'm probably going to put another coat on there later. The problem is it's soaking into the wood. Um, I just want to demonstrate what I'm doing, really, more than anything. Because who's going to want me to watch me put on several coats of black paint into the letters and wait for them to dry? On a live video. An edited one, yes. Because I can chop bits out and I can squeeze it all up make it very fast. But not this video. No, because it's live. I need to sit water now saying that. <coughs> But what I was going to say was, one thing you probably noticed I wasn't doing, and it's because I'm talking, I ain't got a mask on. Now, I do have a mask that's over there, and I do have a mask which is also over there. Um, but I can't obviously do that and, and create a video at the same time. But oh, yes, you should. That's a mask on, but also a mask on and some air defenders. <laughs> Such as these ones over here. Touch them. And I've got some noise cancelling on somewhere, but the battery's run out. And... But no, they, they're de obviously, obviously, that's a must. You must do that, especially when using the router or angle grind sanders and stuff like that. Um, because I, I, I do get a bit of tetanus now because years and years of physical abuse. Not by the missus. That's another video. No, um, physical abuse by machines. Booze are myself. And uh, machines didn't used to be as good as they are now. Oh, battery might run out. It shouldn't do, because that is on, should be on charge. What does it say? Oh, I was on charge now. Oh, I'm plugged in properly. Oh, that should be right now. So. Bear with me. I need no battery pack because that one's dead already. So, How's that one? There? Yep, let's charge. Oh, sorry about that, but I'm back. Oh, it's drying. Good. So I can show you what I mean, even though it's not as dark as it would be, the letters, because normally I'd have them really black, like the sign I showed you outside, they'd be really, really black. But obviously, like I said a minute ago, it's going to take too long. And it will be incredibly boring watching paint dry. So what I'm going to do is take this thing off. Which I might have to do over there. Because you can't grip it because of the spiky bits. So can I do it? No. It hurts. Right. There it is. Some grips. The problem is that well, you can't grip this thing. You have to use a. Is 
this is a quite new wire wheels, are quite aggressive. So, need a pad. That needs replaced as well. I've got some new ones over there actually. I should have swapped the overwire off. That's 120. I don't really want to go any coarser than that. Looks like you should be wearing a mask for this piece. magical bit. So, how cool is that? There's my Wally Bois. Is that back to front? Or is it just for me? Maybe it's just for me. <laughs> oh, there goes my cable. So, yeah, it's a very simple thing to do, to make. It's not, it's not, you know, too complicated, is it really? You know, and also you don't go mad cutting, you know, paint, when you're painting or what have you, paint all the letters in, you haven't got to go back to shoes there, so I'm just sand it off afterwards. It's done the trick, isn't it? Then you decide whether or not you want to put another coat and then do it again. So basically do the same thing again, build up your coat if you want to. Um, but all I'm going to do, I think, I'm just going to cut this length, however long I want it to be, and clean up these edges a little bit, and then get a few coats of linseed oil. That's what I'm going to do, because I think I look, I think I look a treat. What do you reckon? I put some glass on, because that's what people say. If say it was said anything, say it's wonderful. Oh, how wonderful that is. Hey, Kit Kat. You could, yeah, I've done that before as well. Well, the one outside actually uses a blowtorch on that as well. Um, so you can use, but you can basically um, burn, yeah, the, where, where we're painted black, you can burn it with a blowtorch. Yeah, what happened there? Yeah, you can burn those letters with a blowtorch and then sand off or run it through the thickness of plane if you've got one. Um, you don't need to just use a sander. And you'll have, you'll have a, that more kind of quite a warm, mellow look to it as well. It looks quite good. So, um, and also, you know, the t when you burn tin, it actually preserves it, believe it or not, unless you burn it away. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you reckon? I've got to get the wally in there, there you go. How simple was that? So it didn't take a huge amount of time, and don't forget I'm making a video as well, I don't know how long the video is. It's under two, oh, actually it's one hour, 52. So it only took two hours to make that, and make this video from start to finish. And you could do it in an hour. You could. You could, you could easily do that in an hour. Yeah, with all the net, one that sort of size. Probably less, actually, to be honest. You could probably do it maybe getting, yeah. You know, me nattering and stop, constantly stopping and nattering. Obviously, it makes it take longer, doesn't it? Hey, Duke, I hope you're feeling a bit better now, mate, after your nap. <laughs> Cheers, Jasper. <laughs> yeah. But that's going to. That is going to be hung above my um, desk upstairs, behind the head, so it's just, for, you know, um, in the studio. That's the idea of that. And I'm going to do one similar for the um, other channel as well. But, um, yeah. It's cool. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Well, gee, is that a district attorney? I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry. I used that paint when I made my middle child's art case. Ah, did you? What, you're talking about this stuff from Action? It's so cheap. <laughs> and it's actually good. It's not bad paint, even outside. So I've, I've used it on stuff outside. It's really test, holds up the test of time. It really does. You use it on metal as well, so. It's just car paint, and that's all it is, really. <laughs> I've got to go back over it, have I? Over my A. I think that's alright, that'll do. I'm happy with that. 
I don't want it to be too kind of like too contrasty. It's um, I think it's okay as it is. But if I do it for a customer, I'd, I'd be really paranoid and I'd what, make sure it all sanded out properly and stuff like that. But it's for my, you know, it's for my little studio upstairs. So um, I think it's pretty damn cool. I wonder if my Wally would be happy with it. My little doggy, my Wally dog. So anyway, I think I'm going to call it it. Um, just cut this to length on the old uh, saw over there on the uh, ragged arm saw and uh, I'm going to take it in and put a bit of linseed oil in it where it's warm I might clean these edges up a bit better first, polish them up first and uh, actually it's going to go, yeah oil it, oil, oil, yeah I'm going to oil it with linseed oil I think I've got some, if not I might just wax it the problem with wax is it doesn't, when you get all these nooks and crannies it just isn't that great have I got any linseed oil? that's a question isn't it? So you could use danger. <laughs> so I'm going to cut the length, it's about what, fringes over there. So let's just do that, let's just chop that down to length. Got enough room on this board here, I can make another sign. See? Let's just cut it off there. Oh, let's move my glass of wine. Oh dear. Wine's so cheap in France. Ridiculously cheap, in fact. You get cheap wine, that is vinegar. You get vinegar wines as well. So I'm just going to chop that to length. Using this machine here, this is a uh, radio alarm saw. So basically what it does is, it's a saw, a circular saw, and it's on this rail system. So it's not like a chop saw, where you bring it down like so. It's actually, um... Is that charging? Let's better make sure that's charging. Yes, it is. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a chop saw where you bring the handle down. You actually bring it to you. It's on a rail. Um, bring it here. Uh, it frightens some people because they can be a little bit ferocious. Um, but I use it all the time. And I never, ever move it from 90 degrees. It's always set at 90 degrees. If I want to do a 45, I've made a jig, doing my 45s. So that's my 45 degree jig, which clamps down into place. This clamp here, and that's perfectly 45. Wherever that line is is where it cuts. You know, the edge, wherever, wherever I line this edge up, that's where it cuts. It's really accurate and really easy to use. The problem is when you use chop saw, and you're constantly moving from 45 to 90, 45 to 90, it wears. And eventually it's not going to be 45, it's going to be fractionally out. It's not going to be 9, it's going to be fractionally out. So if you're doing a picture frame, for instance, and you've got four mitres, so that's eight cuts, if each one of them are my minuscule pit out, when you get to put that last corner again, we don't want to go together, it'll be gappy. And you have to titillate it up until you've got all the corners married up all nicely, you know? So, um, this is how, I just prefer it that way. And then I, when I'm doing picture frames, I then use this machine here, or guillotine here as well. Don't put your fingers in it now that I take them off. So, um... Yeah, not Tom Matthew. No. So I use this for my 45s and it's perfectly set up. And so I cut them first on that, pretty much bang on, and then I trim them with this. They take a little way for thing cut off with this. I'll show you one day actually, I might do a video of that. It's a great little bit of kit, and they're not horrendously expensive. This one's just an Axminster to one. It's a, sport. it's a Chinese import um, distributed by Ax, um, Axminster. <coughs> In the UK, that is. I used to buy loads of stuff from Ax, um, Axminster, the Rockler. Right, back, right, maybe a little bit. I 
doesn't really matter to me. I don't want, what I want to make, I've got enough meat here because I'm going to hang the sign, so I don't want to have it so it's um, too close to the letters. So anyway, I think that's okay there, but same, I've got that in. So let's start up. Let's plug it in. <laughs> Close. They're the scary blade. See, no burn marks. Now that's a sign that your blade is sharp. And I sharpen my own blades, believe it or not. My tungsten tuck <coughs> tipped carbide blades. So you don't have to throw your blades away, you can sharpen them. I'll show you the deal one day. The only thing I would say about that is that some blades aren't worth sharpening. But if you've got good blades like these ones, they are. And I use a lot of um, CMT blades, are quite good. They're, they're bright orange. And these ones are this yellow one, I can't remember called that, Saxon blade. Um, and I've only started using them, and I think they're better than the CMT, and they're cheap. They're cheap on Amazon. That blade there was like 30 euros delivered here. So it's, it's cheap as chips. Now, I was paying 60 to 70 pounds for blades before. So I have these cheap blades come in, and they're good blades. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, and the more teeth you've got on the blade, the more expensive it can be. So there we go. There is my signs. Obviously, I've got a bit of finish on it. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> I'm quite pleased with that, that's all right. As you can see, the letters aren't all the same size. They start small, get a little bit bigger, and then they go smaller again. Only by a little bit, but enough to create that little bit of... It makes it a bit warmer, I think, a bit more friendly looking. That's my idea anyway. So there you go, that's my sign. Um, I'm not going to put any finish on it because it's still very, very... See the colour on the back there? It, it was very wet. I should have waited already, but um, I'm too impatient. <laughs> so there you go, that is the Wally Bar sign made with the router. We started off in the work, um, sorry, in the office using uh, uh, Affinity Photo, which is a bit like Photoshop, to create the letters. And I showed you how to put a black line around the letters because they started off, you know, fully black letters. You don't need that, do you? It's silly. All that ink get printed off for no reason. Um, and also, it makes the paper wet. Not on the ink trip, not obviously this laser printer, but um, so I showed you that and we came in the workshop, transferred the letters to the piece of wood, which I had prepared earlier, sort of. <laughs> uh, and then we wrote them out using the router, such as this one here, and this is a Makita router, 1850 watt, half inch router. It's quite old now, but it's still a brilliant bit of kit. Not, the newer ones aren't quite as good, I don't think, to be honest. Um, they've, got some, they've got little tricks and stuff on them, but the build quality I don't think is quite as good as these old ones. No, um, and what we created is this sign, and we painted the letters I showed you, so they stand out, and then sanded it off. So what we did with the paint, we were getting all fussy, just spray the whole thing, didn't it? You know, and then just sanded off the excess, and then get that. Now that make a lovely house sign. You, you can use all sorts of signs. They don't have to be weighing edge like this one, sort of, sort of um, rustic like that. You know, it could be all routed, all like an OG moulding on the outside edge of the of the board, if you like. Um, whatever you fancy, it can be just square. Or you can do it the other way round. Instead of it being recessed, like I've done here, you could have you have the letters proud. What that be called? This is more embossed, isn't it? So this is relief, proud, or oh, I don't know. Anyway, where well, the letters come out. So effectively, instead of removing the letter itself. I'd remove everything else around it, leaving the letter behind. So be proud. I don't like it personally. And also, I feel that um, if you put them outside, they don't last long for some reason. I don't know why that is. I think it's because you've got all the ledges and all the water sits on them and drives them behind them. Um, they're a little bit manky, a bit quick. I don't think it looks nice. I think th this looks good. Good. Anyway, anyway I'm going to go. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody.
Dee 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 dee. Wally, ah oh, no, is this a double mean? It's like Johnson. Is that a double meaning too? If it isn't in the States. Tongue oil, yeah, we can use tongue oil. There's no picture of Wally on it, I know. But just, I didn't leave myself enough room, did I? I might do a separate picture. I might, I, that'd be quite nice to do actually, is do um, an actual portrait of Wally with biography. Wood burning, you know? That'd look really cool. I might have a go at that. I might have to improve my skills. <laughs> that might be funny to watch. Yeah, bye radio. Yeah, you all stay safe. Yeah, you keep your, yeah, don't pay any attention to what some of these people are saying. Just get yourself mask, mask yourselves up and protect yourselves. Because you can't rely on other people to protect you, because a lot of people don't seem to care, to be honest. And you, yeah. Um, and when you've got all this going on at the moment regarding people over here trying to get back to the UK, and some people are managing them to do it, and um, they, they don't get it, do they? They just don't get the reasoning. It's all about me, 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 me. Uh, quite frankly, I thought I'd hurt someone or, or worse, killed somebody because I had the virus and I gave it to them. And I knew I had the virus, even, make it even worse. I don't know, I'd live with myself with that, it'd be horrible. Wouldn't be that nice for them either. Anyway, ta ta, I'm off. <laughs> I keep saying that. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't help myself. Oh, anyway, don't forget to click like and subscribe and maybe that little bell icon because then you get one buzz in your pocket every time I upload another video. And they won't always be live videos like this one. I have got plans, I've just been a bit snowed under, and I do want to be doing regular video videos, probably edited videos for this, because I think it suits a lot of these types of videos to condense and make them a bit more um, informative, um, to the point, not just be blabbering along. Long? Blabbering, blabbering along. Well, anyway, ta-ta! <laughs> oh, wait, my button. Oh, it's over there. No, no, it's the lens. Oh, I see it, there we go. Ta-ta! Ha, ha, ha.